Hey friends, this is the 3 Devo Composer, and I've been wanting to get my hands on this machine since I first saw it back in 2017 at the Formnext 3D Printing Conference in Germany. 3 Devo is a company based in the Netherlands, and they've made this desktop-sized machine that promises to make it simple to make my own 3D printing filament from scratch. So that means I can make all kinds of interesting materials, I can mix together any colors I want, and hopefully I could even recycle failed prints into new fresh filament. Clearly this is a really sleek machine and they've promised a really refined, simple experience. So I'm really excited to get started. Today I'm just gonna run through their quick start guide and see what it takes to get started making my own filament. So let's get right to it. Cool. As you saw with that quickest unboxing ever, the composer comes pretty much as this complete unit, which is great. But what I didn't realize is that I was supposed to get a second shipment that has the plug, the hopper, and a few other accessories. So that shipment got lost, but I did end up getting a replacement. It's here now, so let's go ahead and do this. This box contains two spools, which we'll use to wind up our filament, plenty of gloves, plenty of bags, I think these might be extra since I'm a YouTuber, but uh, there's also a USB cable, mystery box, our US plug, a really beefy looking one. They gave me some decals, probably also an influencer thing. And of course, we're gonna need our materials. So in here, we've got some HDPE flush, which is just for transitioning between different filaments you're making. There's also this Devo Clean to clean out the whole extrusion system after you've made your filament. And then we've got the PLA granulate itself. And this is what will actually turn into 3D printing filament. They gave me plenty of that. And they also sent me a couple of replacement nozzles. Now let's just open up this mystery box. In here we've got this acrylic tube, which is gonna be our hopper. And finally this special spool holder, which will attach the spools to the winder. So let's go ahead and pop that hopper right into place. It's a friction fit right there. We'll go ahead and stick this big old plug into the wall. And I'll load up one of these empty spools onto this spool holder. You just screw this down into place. Whee! Until it's nice and tight. We'll slide that right into place. And then inside this door on the right side, we have access to all the other mechanical parts that we're gonna be working with. So we'll just take off the protective bits. There is some plastic dusting all around here. So maybe this is refurbished or just tested before. But in any case, let's turn this thing on and get it running. Here on the front, we have the user interface. It's just a click wheel and that's what we use to change all the settings and get everything running. I started out by entering my activation code so that I can get full access to the controls of this machine. And now it's ready to go. So nothing left to do but load this thing up with some granulate and get it going. So I'll go ahead and open up this new pack of PLA granulate. And they say you can use a minimum of 100 grams, but I got pretty excited and it's really fun watching this fill the hopper. So I put quite a bit more than that. Great, now we can go ahead and click, and before we start extruding, we just wanna enter a material preset. So there's plenty of presets for different materials, and we'll just select PLA at 1.75 millimeters, hit start extrusion, set it to start extruding automatically once it reaches temperature, and then we just have to wait for it to heat up. The little image you're seeing here is basically a representation of the entire extruding system. So these numbers one through four are the four different heaters. You can see the true temperatures on top and the set temperatures on the bottom. On the left, we have the hopper and then the extrusion screw will push the plastic all the way through these heaters and out the nozzle where it leads to the optical sensor. After 10 or 15 minutes, the extrusion started. And as soon as the plastic starts coming out of this nozzle, you can just pull it down and stretch it through the optical sensor and clip it into this puller wheel at the bottom. Then the machine just starts pulling the filament automatically. And as you can see, it is pretty blobby here, but the optical sensor gives that information to the machine and slowly it'll adjust the pulling speed and the screwing speed until it gets a nice consistent diameter of filament. 
Once the filament starts coming out more consistently, we can go ahead and feed it through the positioner here and clip it to our spool. This part took me a while to get a hang of because the filament is extruding pretty quickly, so you have to work really fast, clip it in and start the spooling before the filament starts extruding too much and cooling and turning into a mess. That's pretty much what happened the first time I tried to do it. No worries, I just went ahead and pulled through that mess of tangled filament, cut it again, and then tried one more time. There was a lot going on here, so I couldn't film the interface as well, but basically you just tell it to start spooling, and once it reaches tension, you hit the button again, and it'll start matching the speed of the extrusion, and automatically wind the filament nice and neat. Here you can see in real time how quickly it's extruding that filament. Apparently it'll do a kilogram in about an hour or an hour and a half. So overall, the way this thing works isn't too complicated. The filament goes into the hopper, it feeds through a screw, and slowly heats up and mixes together until it comes out of this nozzle, where it's cooled by two cooling fans. It passes through the optical sensor that continues to accurately read the diameter. It gets pulled down and fed through this positioner, which moves left and right based on the width of the spool to correctly wind it up. All of that is done in this single machine. Pretty awesome, right? On this screen, you can constantly see the reading of the optical sensor, and from the looks of it, I'm getting an accuracy of plus or minus 0.05 to 0.07 millimeters. Not too bad. There's also this knob on the back that adjusts the tension on the filament winder and I had it a little bit too loose, and that caused the filament not to wind as quickly as it was being extruded, and that caused this mess. Oh boy. So I had to cut that spool short, but that gave me the opportunity to try winding one more time. This time I actually fed the filament through the correct hole here, and kind of bent it into place, and I think I did a little bit of a cleaner job. It's probably also a good idea just to tape this initial piece of filament into place, and that'll also help make sure that the tension remains. Now that the knob on the back was tightened, there was no more slipping, and everything just worked like a charm. How about some pretty close-up shots? So this machine's been running for about half an hour now, and it seems to be working pretty flawlessly with this uh, PLA granulate. It's got a diameter consistency of plus or minus maybe 60 microns, which is equivalent to probably a really cheap PLA, but it should work on my printers, and I'm pretty excited. So I wasn't planning to do this yet, but I'm going to see if I can add some of my shredded up recycled prints because why not? Let's try adding some of this crushed up support material that was made from Filamentum's Mint PLA. It's already a lovely color, so it'll be interesting to mix it up with some of this raw granulate. I decided to add both the raw plastic and the virgin granulate to the hopper simultaneously, just eyeballing it and trying to get a nice 50-50 mixture. Then I decided, why not try some of this stuff as well? This is a more of a mixture of all kinds of different failed prints. And to get a better mix, I decided to first pre-mix it in this other bag. So I added some of that natural PLA granulate, and then I just shook it up and mushed it until it looked nice and evenly mixed. All right, that's probably a better way to do things. Here's a nice close-up look of what my mixture looks like. Some of the largest shreds of my recycled plastic were maybe a centimeter wide, and that's a bit larger than they should be. And sure enough, as soon as this started extruding, the consistency of the filament definitely started to take a turn for the worst. As you can see here, it's extruding at 1.3 millimeters, which is far less than the 1.75 that we're going for. And as I continued tweaking the settings while extruding, 
things only got worse until it became far too thin and I decided to call it quits. It seems like I'll have to do some experimenting in terms of temperatures, extrusion speed, the cooling fan, things like that until I can really get a consistent diameter with this recycled filament. The extrusion just kept slowing down more and more so I suspect that I hadn't shredded my failed prints enough and I might have clogged the hopper a bit. So instead of letting this slowly extrude all night, I just took a shop vacuum and sucked out as much of this extra plastic as I could. Here you can catch a peak of the extruder screw, pulling in the remaining granulate and feeding that through the heating chamber. Since I'm done for the night, I'm just gonna let that remaining plastic extrude all the way through the system. And then to make sure it's clean for the next run, I'm gonna put some of this Devo Clean in and run that through as well. I'll just make sure to add enough to completely push out all of that remaining PLA. Here you can see that Devo Clean coming out. It looks super satisfying extruding out of this really fat nozzle up top. I wonder if there's something I can do with this extrusion as well. <laughs> well, I guess I got a little bit ahead of myself there with trying to do the recycled filament. After all, I did just start using this machine today, but you know what? At least I got this really cool noodle. Yeah, I'm gonna give myself a little more time to become familiar with this machine, but for now, I do have a little bit of filament that I hope is within the tolerances of being able to actually print something with. So I think that's how we're gonna end the night. Let's see if we can get some kind of print using this brand new filament. I'm actually gonna try out the last spool of filament I made where some of that recycled PLA did end up extruding. And we'll see if that'll work, even though the diameter wasn't completely perfect all throughout. I decided to print out a little tiny version of my monochromatic vase on this ZincBot printer. And what do you know, it actually printed out really well. And the color is pretty amazing. It's this really light, milky, minty green color. I'm kind of in love with it. The print worked nearly flawlessly all the way through, just using my default settings for PLA. So that's really nice. I also printed out this tiny version of my spin vase. And here I actually caught the filament as it was transitioning between my recycled filament and just that raw transparent PLA. And that created this really nice gradient up throughout the print. This one also printed out completely with no problems. And just the subtle changes in the color of filament have a really nice elegant result. On this one, you might see a couple of those tiny little red flecks, but those are actually just from the last print that I did on the printer. So that has nothing to do with the filament that I extruded through the 3 Devo composer. On the spin vase, there are a few really tiny black specks, and those might be from contaminants in the extrusion process, but it's really minor and it didn't clog the print or anything. So that's still pretty darn good. Hey, so even without dialing in the settings perfectly, I was still able to get some really nice prints using filament I made. This is the very first print I've ever done with filament that I made, and that's awesome. So I'm really excited to keep playing around with this 3 Devo. Like I said, today was really just kind of my first impression, just seeing how quickly I could get to making some filament, and as it turns out, I got to it really quickly. In terms of recycling my failed prints, I think a big improvement will come from grinding down my plastic even further to get it practically to dust. Then I think I can make some really nice filament from failed prints. I'm already in love with this custom color I made. If you're as excited about this machine as me and you wanna see what else I come up with, please give this video a like and consider subscribing. But that's it for today, so until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired. Got it.